I want to talk about what we know about the leaf architecture and how it potentially impacts the efficiency of foliar fertilizers and plant uptake. In this image here, I have a photograph of a plant leaf close to the ground. And if you look at the leaf, I've drawn a red dashed line where if you imagine cutting the plant at that point and then putting that under a microscope, the image on the right is what that plant leaf would look like when magnified. In this image, I've got all of the various structures of the leaf identified that are of importance to us in this particular presentation. Now the boliform cells, these are large cells that contain primarily water and they expand and contract causing the leaf to roll up or unfurl primarily in response to moisture stress. In other words, if it's dry, the boliform cells contract causing the leaf to curl up and this is a natural response by the plant in order to attempt to conserve water. Now, there's also bands of sclerotinized tissue on the back side of the leaf. These are what primarily provide the architecture and the structural support rigidity to the leaf which allows it to uh, um, stand up vertically. Then we have the vessel elements. These are what transport water up and nutrients and other assimilates down through the leaf and throughout the leaf tissue. The parts that are of primary importance to us though when we talk about foliar fertilization are the stomates and the cuticle. Now, the stomates, what they are, are they're the port on the leaf that allow for gas exchange. The cuticle, on the other hand, is a waxy surface that um, serves as a barrier between the plant and its living environment. Now, if we take a section of this leaf and we magnify it, see the same view, except we just have a closer image now of the stomates and the cuticle. With foliar feeding, it's interesting to note that more than likely the stomates, even though they're larger ports of entry into the plant, that probably foliar applied nutrients are not absorbed into the plant via the stomates. And the reason that we think this is because foliar absorption in experiments that have been conducted is actually greatest at night when the stomates are closed. So that makes it somewhat unlikely that the stomata are a, a primary avenue of entrance into the plant of the nutrients. Another interesting fact that makes it unlikely that foliar applied nutrients enter through the stomates is that there's actually more of them on the lower leaf surface and if you think about an application of a liquid material you're much more likely to have that liquid rest on the upper leaf surface than you are on the lower leaf surface and again this also makes it less likely that the stomates serve as a primary avenue of entrance of foliar applied nutrients. Therefore, we think it's the cuticle, the waxy interface between the plant and the outside environment that actually serves as the primary avenue of entrance of foliar nutrients. And what the cuticle is, again, it's an interface between the plant and atmosphere, and it's composed of a biopolymer called cutin and embedded intercuticular waxes. And this has a very heterogeneous structure to it and there's what we call a sorption diffusion mechanism that governs how permeable this particular layer is. So it's basically a waxy layer, but the heterogeneous nature of it allows certain things to pass through it, certain other things, um, the passage is prevented. It's not the cuticle itself that we think is responsible for the absorption of most foliar applied nutrients. We think it's what's called transcuticular pores. And what these are are tiny cracks in the cuticle, nanometers in size. And we believe that this is the avenue through which most nutrients enter the leaf. Okay? Um, because of their very small size, individual ions or simple ion pairs are thought to be able to enter through these cracks. However, large chelated materials, depending on the nature of the chelated material, 
the molecule might be too large in order to be able to pass through these channels. Since these channels tend to have a negative charge to them, it's thought that cations such as ammonium with its positive one charge are attracted to these channels, whereas anions such as negatively charged nitrate would actually be repelled. So in summary, the nutrient that is applied to the turf is thought to affect the efficiency of foliar feeding. In other words, if you apply your nitrogen as ammonium, you're much more likely to have uptake through the foliage than if you apply nitrate. It's also thought that the turf grass species affects efficiency. For example, bent grass is thought to absorb nutrients more efficiently than Bermuda grass, primarily because there's more stomates per unit area than what you see on a Bermuda grass. Now, I had already said that stomates are not the primary avenue of absorption, but when you have more stomates, you also have more transcuticular pores. The environment at the time of application is also going to affect the efficiency of foliar feeding. As the temperature increases, you'll have an increase in efficiency of, of uptake. As the relative humidity increases, you'll also have an increase in uptake efficiency. The pH of the nutrient solution that is applied is very important. The pH of the nutrient solution has to be such that the element is in a form that is available for uptake by the leaf tissue. If the pH is too high or too low, that nutrient element can actually be bound up in insoluble salts that would not be taken up readily by the leaf. Also, the concentration <coughs> of the nutrient solution is going to affect the efficiency of foliar feeding. As the concentration increases, you're going to increase the efficiency of nutrient uptake to a point. However, earlier in this session I indicated that if you increase the concentration beyond a certain critical point, you'll actually end up having too high of a concentration which will result in some foliar burn. And so you have to be careful with the <coughs> nutrient concentration. You want it to be high enough to optimize uptake without burning the leaf tissue. Some factors that may decrease the efficiency of foliar applied materials include the thickness of the plant cuticle. As you increase the thickness of the plant cuticle, you also make it a more impermeable <coughs> barrier. Even though most of the nutrients are thought to go through transcuticular pores, the length of the channel that they would have to pass through, as that increases, you're going to decrease the efficiency of uptake. Also, the cuticle by its nature tends to be a waxy surface and waxy surfaces are what we call hydrophobic. So just like on a well waxed car, when you have water applied to that surface, the water beads up and runs off. Okay, With a cuticle, since it's waxy in nature, you can actually end up having beading up of the nutrient solution on the surface of the leaf blade and runoff to the soil rather than uptake by the plant foliage. Also, if the spray solution dries too rapidly on the leaf surface. Remember these materials need to be in solution in order to be most efficiently taken up by those transcuticular pores. If the solution dries too rapidly, that can also decrease the efficiency of the application. Another question about foliar feeding is its relative contribution in the context of overall nutrient status. In other words, what is the contribution of foliar feeding in the context of what the plant gets in from the soil versus what it gets from the plant foliage? And you know, this is something that we're researching actively in turf. Unfortunately, it's an area that's kind of difficult to study. Um, kind of like potassium, a lot of times the um, most Profound results with potassium fertilization are things that we see in real management situations and not in a controlled experiment. But a lot of research is underway to attempt to determine just what the contribution is of foliar applied materials in relation to the nutrients that are already available in the soil and being taken up actively by the roots. So foliar fertilization is a concept that is 
interesting in the sense that it can provide an opportunity to get nutrients into the plant potentially more efficiently under certain environmental stress situations such as heat stress that results in decline of the root system but there are some questions that remain about its efficiency relative to conventional root uptake overall.